You have Jesus' DNA. I mean, you were born again. The divine nature attributes that you have are the same divine nature attributes that Jesus had, and this is your DNA, my DNA, our DNA. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the new creation. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we, when we come together, Lord, your Holy Spirit is with us to guide us and to touch us, to minister to our hearts and our minds, Lord. And we just, Lord, open ourselves up to you, to hear and to receive from you. Let your word, let your truth set us free that we may be able, Lord, to appropriate everything that you have achieved for us on the cross and by being resurrected in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. So I'm going to kind of step back a moment in the series that uh, um, I've been covering. And... Um, to realize the importance of us knowing what's going on and taking a clear position to be able to stand against the tricks and the attacks of the enemy. You know, if you are in a war and you don't know it, you don't have a chance, do you? You are going to be hit, and you don't know where it's coming from. You need to know, and some people don't like to talk about spiritual warfare, don't like to talk about the enemy, and I really, you know, there is a bit of truth in that, that we don't need to be focusing all the time on the enemy. Actually, you know, even in the battle, we don't need to focus on the enemy. We need to focus on the Lord. So the idea is that we need to have the proper, proper perspective, the proper stand for us to overcome. But at the same time, we need to be not ignorant about what's going on, because if we are ignorant that we are doing, we are going to expose ourselves in a way that uh, we are disadvantaged. We can know what's happening. We can know what to do because we have inside information. And so we can, uh, you know, be able to change what's happening around us by the position we take and by exercising our authority. So our, you know, focus, our attention should, could be in our ability and what God has given us rather than uh, what uh, the enemy is trying to do. We need to take a position to overcome, okay? Victory is not automatic. You can see it very well. There are lots of Christians that actually are beaten up and not experiencing victory because they don't know. See, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. And so we need to have knowledge. And we have to need to have wisdom. See, for this reason, you know, God has given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know what is available to us. And we need to realize that uh, our understanding, our mind, has to grasp the truth of what is within us. And that's the process that takes place as we allow the word to change the way we think and the way we see reality around us. That we had to learn to do that. And this is really what I'm trying to do in this series here, okay? Now, you know, understanding the war you are in and understanding the posture or the position or the means by which you had to fight. Okay. You can say, well, you know, I, I, I like to think about God. Oh, yeah, absolutely, I do too. 
this is why I'm going to fight. <laughs> because otherwise, by myself, I would have no chance. Okay, the thing is, the greater is the one is in us, the one is in the world. That's what the word says. So we have, uh, you know, inside information, inside and a power, inside the direction to be able to guide us to the victory. Because the victory is there, it's been already conquered. Jesus already has done everything that he could have done. Now is our time to do our job according to the functions that we have within the body of Christ. But it's our time to take action and to achieve what God wants us to achieve. See, we have to understand the three important things, you know, that uh, uh, involve, are involved in this Bible. And I'm repeating myself, but some things, the more we repeat them, the more they get down to us. You know, there are scriptures that I memorized ages ago. And, you know, after years... I get new, new revelation about them, a new understanding, and they become much more powerful in my life. So this is something that we have to actually do, bring us to our remembrance, the things that we know and allow, but at the same time, you know, just say, oh, you know, a lot of people, oh, I know that, big deal. You know, uh, that's the wrong attitude because uh, there is so much more that we can get from the things that we know because God infinite knowledge is beyond our little minds. And we, when we get the scripture and we get big revelation, it's not the end of the story. That's just the beginning of a new experience. So I just want to stress something, you know, that in this battle, you know, in this war, the battlefield is your mind. You see, your mind is where the, the actual activity takes place. But not only there, but this is really the center, the place where things are triggered. Okay? This is where your fight really takes place. And if you don't win there, there is no way you're going to get anywhere. You need to take charge of what's going on in your head. You need to understand that that is the place, that is the, the area in which you had to start taking position and authority over. But then there is more involved in that. You see, it's not the whole thing, it's not just your mind. Okay, your mind determines actions and words that are going to come out of you. When your mind is in the right posture, in the right position, in the right uh, frame, then you are going to say the right thing and you are going to do the right things to get to the victory. Otherwise, you are going to be deflected and you're going to put yourself in situations that actually are damaging, that are not going to get you the victory, are going to get you the defeat and allowing the enemy to take over. But finally... The things that you had to conquer the ter is the territory. And is the territory is the physical area in which you had to overcome. See, there are th those three, three or two, two different or three different things that are important to understand. And each of them is different in terms of uh, what is involved in them. See, the territory is the area of struggle you have. For example, it could be your body, you are sick, you have a disease, you have a pain, you have a problem. Well, that's your territory. You see, when the victory is over, you, that, that part is going to be under your control, under your dominion, and you're not going to have the problem anymore. You know, it could be another things like that. For example, your finances, that you can make, get the handmaids, and that is there where, you know, you had to come to the place in which you are more than provided for that, because this is God's plan for you. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So you see, the things that we base ourselves on are the word of God, God's promises by which we can overcome the things that come to us. See, those are the things that are the guidance, the direction, that give us the assurance that God is behind us and we can exercise our faith in those things that he said, those are yours. And we have to take that, you have to have very clear, so if we don't know the word, if you don't know what God promised to us, if you don't know what we can expect from God, 
You know, even when sometimes we know, you know, our mind and our soul and is messed up and we have problem with implementing and, in, and receiving it. And this is where the battle comes because it's to start up here. Are you there with me? Yes. I'm taking other things, you know, family. So, you know, the, the enemy wants to destroy families. Because this is the basis in which God created us. It's the only way that things are going to work. And the enemy is working to, against that and he's trying to destroy them. This is, if you, a problem in that area, that's the area that you have to overcome. You have to focus on the battle to, to just get victory. Hallelujah. Maybe other things could be, you know, that, uh, they, that you are struggling with. You had to focus. You had to know exactly what you had to work on. You had to overcome the territory that you had to take over and, and subjugate or have dominion over. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, take other areas like children, your children, they may have problems at school or other things, you know. These things or addiction or depression or fear or whatever it is. That's the territory that you have to overcome, that you have to take over. And when the victory comes, not when, you know, you just pray a bit and you feel a bit better inside. No, it's when you take charge and you are a dominion over that territory. And you have pushed the enemy off it. Okay? And this is what God wants for you. That's what God wants us to understand. So, you know, the basic principle is this. You know, submit to God, fight the devil, and he will flee. Yeah, it, it, it's much more complicated than that. See, that's the summary of the condensation of what, but you have to start implementing it. Start, you know knowing how to go about it, how to do the things that are going to make a difference at the level on those diff three different areas. Okay, your mind, your thinking, your, 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 the way you act and the way you say, you say, the speak, and the way that, uh, you know, the territory in which you had to overcome. And you had to deal with them in different ways, evidently. Okay. So, one... Uh, the other point I want to stress today is what said in Matthew 11, 12. You know, from this day, from this day, you know, from the day of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven is suffered violence and is the violent take it by force. So the idea is we have to exercise, you know, it's not an easy ride, it's war. So there is a, a implementation that involves force, violence, strength. See, Christian can be just namby-pamby. They need to really be determined and strong. You know, you see what God was saying to Joshua? You know, be very strong. Be very courageous. You need to be courageous to fight certain battles. Amen. And uh, they are not necessarily easy, and the enemy doesn't play fair. So we need to understand that for us, is to, we have to expect him not to play fair. Can say, you know what, that's not fair. What does not God. You know, lots of people blame God for their problems. When instead, you know, he's trying to help us. He's, trying, he's has provided the information, has provided the Holy Spirit inside us, has provided her, uh, to us the word so that we can fight the battle. But we had to be wanting. You see, this is one of the requirements that God has from us. We had to be wanting it badly. Not just, well, you know, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. Well, with that way, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay, that's the thing. We had to mean business because the enemy means business against us. Against actually, not just us, against God in general. Okay, so, you know, take him by violence, take him by force. We have to understand well what that means. Because that can be distorted according to the flesh instead of according to the spirit. We are talking about a spiritual battle here. As a physical results in the world around you, but it's a spiritual battle. 
You had to fight it with spiritual weapons. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And now, okay, I want to say just one thing that I didn't say before, but I want to fill in this. You know, I'm trying to fill in some of the, you know, stress some of the things I said before, but fill in some of the gaps that uh, is very difficult to talk about. This is a big topic. So one of the things that we talked about was how Jesus overcame the battle already. And now he stripped all the power and authority from the enemy. But he has still some legal rights. And I want to, you know, everything is done legally in God's kingdom. You cannot play games according to other ways. You have to do it the way God says. Because he is, is orderly. Okay? So there are areas, although the devil is defeated, okay, he has three legal rights yet. The first legal right is to tempt you. He can tempt you. See, um, <clears throat> in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 says, And all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. So, you know, he uses these three things that have an effect on us to tempt us in different ways. Using them to distract us, number one. I mean, you know, you can be there praying, you may be needing healing, or you may need a breakthrough in some area. And uh, instead of focusing on what you had to do, you know, you start watching TV and wasting your time. And he just put the temptation there so that you are distracted. You see, distraction is one of the major strategies of today because so much is going on in the world. It is very difficult to entice, entice you and get you to go so to waste your time. See, if he gets you to waste your time, when you are there just at the edge or breaking through, and he gets you to be distracted, you just lose momentum, and you are not anymore on the edge. So the important thing to understand that one of his end time strategies is actually distraction. The other way is deception. You know, he does that all the time, and this is another way, you know, but it's the same thing. I mean, you are deceived into distraction. But, you know, deception is that he promises some things that actually are not true. And so you are sucked in into his game. Number one, temptation. Number two, accusation. You know, in uh, Re Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says, and the accuser of the brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. That is when uh, it's going to happen. But, but you know, has not been cast down completely yet. He's still working. He's still accusing. You know, he comes to you and says, you know, look at this. Look what you did. That's a Christian operating. That is, you know, and he's using that to put you down so that you start feeling bad about yourself. And you say, oh, you know, God doesn't care about me. God doesn't love me. And, and that's all the things that you said. And that's the thing that, you know, putting himself emotions Guilt, shame, all the other things. Forget it. You have to take a position, says, you know, or look at what you did to, you know, 10 years ago. Who cares? You've been saved. You've been washed by the blood. It's gone. The person is dead. It's not him. Somebody else. Okay? You have to take a position to stand in, in your righteousness. That is not your righteousness. It's Jesus' righteousness that was given to you by transference. Okay, the third thing, and this probably is the most difficult for many people, is persecution. You see, he instigates people against you or situation against you so that you are going to be struggling against things. You know, take Paul. Paul, everywhere he went, he was attacked because of what he was doing. You see, the more you work for God, the more, you know, this area is going to be triggered in people that are you know, influenced by the enemy so that they attack you and they do things against you. 
Sometimes even Christians. Okay? So we have to understand that. You see, Jesus himself said in John chapter 15, verse 18 says, If the world hates you, you know that he hated me before he hated you. Okay. So that is really, you know, if they, verse 20 says, in order, if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. So this is something that we can expect. And we take, you know, Peter said, you know, when they are persecuted, the spirit of glory is new. So instead of taking it in a negative way, he said, well, I'm worthy to be persecuted. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello? Hi. Are you following me? Yes. You see, this is why instead of resenting it, instead of, uh, you know, being offended by what people do to us, we should be rejoicing because we know that God is with, the spirit of glory is with us. And instead of being against them, we should be loving them. The Still there? Yes. That's good. <laughs> All right. So... Remember those three areas, those three legal rights that still has, not to be deflected, not to be affected by that. So now the, the, the spiritual battle we are in are, is a spiritual battle, battle, and to fight it, we need to have spiritual weapons. You cannot do it in the physical things only. Okay, they should be spiritually based. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and following says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down the strongholds. You see, the idea is that we have to pull down the strongholds, which are actually ideas, thoughts, and things that are within our minds so that we can overcome. You see, that's what the devil tries to do. Make us think the wrong way so that we do the wrong thing. And we had to break through those areas. And so what we had to do is casting down arguments. And every I think that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Being, bringing every thought, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So this is what the way you do. See, this is a really a, way, a question of exercising. The knowledge that you have in the word of God to submit the thoughts that are contrary to it, to the word of God and to what God, the Bible says. Okay? And, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you know, anything that uh, goes against God within yourself, you have to come against it and cut it off. Don't leave it there because the longer it stays there, the longer you allow those thoughts to go and be stronger in you, the more difficult it's going to be to overcome. Cut the bad, the, the thing that the bad. Cut when it starts and it's going to be a lot easier. Okay? So, then, uh, you see, this is, uh, then is, you see, that's the level the battle starts, the way you think. Then, you know, that's going to produce changes in the way you act and the way you speak. Okay? So, the, th the following things is, you know, you start exercising the authority that you have inside yourself. You see, you have to take dominion over the problem area. If there is a problem in your body, you start talking to your body to line up with the word of God. You see, you are exercising God's authority that you actually are speaking the word, essentially. The word says, you know, that I wish above all things that you may be in prosper and be in health, even I'm, I'm going to be in health. Body, you have to line up with the word of God. By Jesus' stripes, you were healed. And so you line up with the word of God. And you start speaking it out. You start proclaiming what the word of God says. You see, this is what Matthew 6, 7, 18 and following says. You know, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, that means, you know, that uh, you're going to break through all the resistance of the enemy. Amen? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever is bound is loose on earth, you loose in earth is going to be loose in heaven. So this is the thing that you do. You actually proclaim what God says so that it's going to be, and what God said is already done in heaven. You see, uh, 
Isaiah 53, you know, says very clearly, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. So in heaven, you are healed. Down here needs to be implemented. So you implement it here by imposing the authority and the power of God, of the word of God, on the enemy and say, buddy, you line up with that. And the enemy has to go. All right. So, <clears throat> so if you have the areas, that's the thing that you had to, to do. Now I'm going to just open up something that I didn't say, talk about too much before. And it's really, you have to watch your attitude towards God. Because lots of people, you know, blame God because of the problems that are not going the way they want them to be. Or maybe they don't go according to the word. Well, God has nothing to do with us. He has done everything that he could do. Amen. Now it's for us <clears throat> to impose the authority that he has given us. Okay? And so, you know, there is a scripture that, uh, especially in these days, is relevant. And it's the parable of the ten minutes. Or, you know, some people say the ten pounds, whatever, it depends on the translation, really. And this is related especially to these times. It's related to the end times. Okay? I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to draw the thing conclusion from it. Okay? Now... As they heard these things, he spoke another parable because uh, he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Well, you know, it took some time from then. But it's not, you know, according to God, it's not too much. Oh, sorry, it's Luke 19, starting from verse 11 when I, I finished reading. Sorry. Therefore he said, a certain man, nobleman went into a far country to receive him for himself a kingdom and to return. Evidently, this is talking about himself. All right? So he called 10 of his servants and delivered to them 10 minutes that he said to them, do business till I come. You know, that is the new King James. The King James, I, I like even more the way the old King James says it. You know, occupy until I come. See, this, we are talking about territory. So territory is not just doing business. It's actually, we're talking about occupation, yeah. wow. about dominion here on certain area of our life. Okay, so this is what uh, he's talking, occupy until you time, okay, until I come. Now that involves also, you know, doing business because there are things that you have to do, all right? So, but his citizens hated them and send a delegate after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And this is to referring to the Jews, but that's fine. And so it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, that he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he may know how much every man had gained in return. Well, yeah. Oh, by trading, sorry. And came the first and saying, Master, your minas have earned 10 minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful with a little. I have, I have you, you know, little, have authority over a 10 city. So you see, as a result of what he achieved, he gave them authority, control, over in a certain area. See, he expanded the area of control that he had given him. Before he had given only 10 bucks, and now he's coming back with 10 times as much, and said, okay, now you own that, that's the part that you control, all right? Now, uh, <clears throat> where are we? Verse 18. And the second one came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also do over five cities. Then another one came and said, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept to put away in a handkerchief. I f for I feared you, because you are a man, an Oster, Oster man, who collect what he did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said, 
out of your mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. So you see, the position that the servant had determined what he got. He didn't trust the master. He thought there was a tough guy that was difficult to deal with and everything else. And he said, you know, you judge yourself. What we say, actually, we are going to be judged by our own words. That's what the word says. Okay? Uh, you knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then do you did not put my money into a bank that at my coming I may have collected this with interest? And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. See, that's um, the response of the people there wasn't really positive. Because they said, well, you know, he was ready 10 minutes, you're giving it to one, and says, well, that's the way it works in the kingdom. Amen. See, some way, the way we think what justice is, is not what justice is from the point of view of God. See, you had to trust him to achieve what he said you should do. So your attitude toward God is important. That's what I'm saying. You know, you had to understand, you know, that uh, God rewards faith. God rewards trust toward them. And what we had to do is actually exercise faith and put it to work for us. That's what happened with Abraham. That's what happened with everybody else that they see in the, the Bible. Now, there is a side that we had to understand, okay, that... Um, It's the war side, okay? War is not love. War is a battle, okay? So war means that actually, you know, there is a conflict taking place and there are aggressive uh, attitudes that need to be involved. But you have to see how you have to direct those attitudes. See, God is love also. But also God is a man of war. If you read... Um, um, what is it? Yeah. Exodus 15, 2, which is really the song of victory from Moses, says, you know, the Lord is my strength and song. This was after he had overcome Egypt and the army that were going after him. Okay? And he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So you see, there is a component of God that actually fought for Israel when the Egypt was going after it and destroyed all the army. Okay? Well, they didn't need to have that kind of a result. They chose to go against what God was trying to convince them many times by signs and wonders. You see, he's doing the same today. See, in this last day, we see lots of signs and wonders happening in the world. Both on the physical realm and also in terms of miracles and things that happen for, with believers. And this should be an incentive, an encouragement for people that don't believe to actually start believing. Are you following me? So he's, you know, he is allowing everything that's going on today to the benefit of those that don't. Because from our point of view, if uh, the whole thing's end today, it's better. We don't have to go through the mess that's going to happen in the future. Okay? But he cares about everybody else. And so he allows the things to happen so that they have a chance to change and to accept, and to repent. Amen. Hallelujah. See, that is the love that he has. But that doesn't mean that justice is not going to come. Okay. So, <clears throat> but, you know, the, the attitude that he has, is evident is that it should be the attitude that we have toward others. 
be people that know God or don't know God. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, it says, But I tell you, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who mistreat and persecute you. I mean, that certainly goes well with the world. That's the opposite. I mean, you know, we're doing nothing to them, but they don't like us. See what happens these days. You can't even have a Bible anymore. That uh, you may be children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise and the evening, on the evil and on the good and send rains on the just and the unjust. So you see, this is the attitude that we had to keep in the fight. That means if uh, the enemy uses persecution to attack you, you don't have the right to be resentful toward them. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. See, that's the attitude that he's calling us to have. Now, you cannot do that in the flesh. You have to be really the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be working inside you to be able to empower to do that. But, you know, it doesn't go too far. You know, sometimes there are minor things that people do to others, even believers, and they get offended. When instead of take, you know, instead of taking it personally, know that that's not their fault. They don't know what's going on. You just have to love them instead of being resentful. Because if you are resentful, they want to suffer more. It's you, not them. So when there is something that uh, is uh, inside you for which you are resentful, you are unforgiving, this is something that you have to repent. You have to change. You have to allow the Spirit of God to empower you to do that because you know it's the right thing to do and you go to the word of God and the word of God says that. So you do it and then you get free. Otherwise, God's anointing cannot operate on you properly. Your relationship with God is affected. He cannot work out your own situation also. Praise the Lord. Yes, still a few minutes. Good. All right. So you see, the idea, what we're talking about here is really identify your enemies. Your enemies are not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. You see, Ephesians 6, 6, 12 says, for wrestling is not against flesh and blood, I mean people, but against principalities, against powers, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual forces of weakness in heavenly places. So we, that's the thing that we identify really. See, to fight a battle properly, you have to know who your enemy is and how to fight it. See, this is what we are talking about here. We are identifying the means by which we fight and who we really fight. All right. Praise the Lord. See, there is a principle. You cannot have victory without a fight. All right? So there is to be a fight. But you have to have the right fight, you know, and the God spot talks about that. You know, it says, fight the good fight of faith. That means it's not a bad fight of faith. It's not the faith. It's the, the fight that is, uh, you know, for, to be mean. You have to be against the forces of darkness, but not against the people involved. Amen. Amen. You know, you cannot do that in the flesh. You see, you have to go close to God. You have to allow God to fill you with the power of God. See, Jesus said, I mean, it was very clear, you know, he was crucified. He was, after being beaten, tortured, and everything else, Father, forgive them. Okay. Well, wasn't, you know, wasn't the only one. Stephen, when he was stoned, you know, he was there as a father, you know, he was killed, and he was a Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. See, that's the spirit. You know, Paul God, the experience he got. I, he was there when Stephen was stoned. I believe 
that that was the key element to touch his heart, even if his heart was hardened, and break it. Okay? See, this is the power that is there. I can tell you stories of other people that have been, even recently, um, martyred in some countries, you know, and um, they just took it completely that way. You know, there was a thing in some... Can I remember the country? It could have been Northern Korea or someplace. You know, the, the whole family of missionary was um, killed. Children and all, I mean, you know, put, they, they, they dug a, a grave and alive and put them in, and they were singing as they were killed. And the whole army there that was there for the execution, they all got saved. That was, you know, wasn't a really nice thing to see, but uh, the power of God operated through them as they were singing and receiving from God. I, I'm sure, you know, to be able to sing, that means they were not affected by anything that was going on in the physical. You can't sing. Children can't sing. Well, I, you do something like that to them. That's the power of God working on them, enveloping them and protecting them. That's the spirit of glory that was upon them that Peter talks about when you are persecuted. Okay. Are you still there this morning? Praise the Lord. Occupy. Speak to the mountain. That's the way you do it. You start speaking to the mountain. You start speaking to the situation. You start speaking to the physical thing that happened. You start speaking the word of God. You speak it and you continue speaking, imposing what the word of God says. You see, you essentially are like the policeman that somebody has made an inflection. is going to stop. And, you know, if the person knows what they're doing, they're going to stop because otherwise they're going to get more trouble. Praise the Lord. Now, my job as a part of the fivefold ministry is to equip the saints for the fight. Okay? That's the thing that we had to do. We had to prepare so that uh, people are ready to fight. The people can do a fight the right way and they can overcome. I don't like casualties. God doesn't, you know, it's a good fight because there shouldn't be any, fight, you know, any, any loss in the game. Any casualty shouldn't be there if they follow God's way. We are unsure. See, God has the victory already. If we stay with him, we are going to get the victory too. That is automatic. But it's not completely automatic. We have to be in the right place, in the right way. Hallelujah. I think it's time to make a confession here and to make some statement about that. Would you say that? Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thank, you thank you for your word. For your word. I, thank you I thank you for what Jesus did. What Jesus did. And by faith, and by faith I, received I received all the benefits, all the benefits that you provided for us. By faith, I receive the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of fight, the spirit of might, in Jesus' name, to receive victory. My victory over my mind is here. My victory over my health is here. I'm all the circumstances of my life. I proclaim the word of God, and I have victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for my victory that Jesus conquered for me by dying, being crucified, and being resurrected to relieve the Holy Spirit 
for me to receive it. Receive power today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.